Welcome to Self Taught, where former foster youth like myself share our real life experiences with sex, health, and life. <laughs> Hosted by the Reproductive Health Equity Project, these are some conversations we wish we'd had earlier. Hey everybody, thanks for coming back. Um, we have somebody super interesting to talk to today. I don't know how we're going to squeeze it all into one episode. I kind of hope we get a second chance to do another follow up. Um, Hey, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, even though we've worked together for like a year, I know that there is a lot to know about you that I don't know. And so I'm just like really excited to do this. And for me and also for a whole bunch of people that haven't met you yet, um, unless they're following your Instagram, do you want to like tell me more in depth about who you are? How do you see yourself? All that good stuff. I don't know. For me, it's it's always been a little difficult to answer that question because I feel like I don't know who I am sometimes. And for me, I'm just always in a constant state of growth. You know, I always want to be better than I was the day before. I want to try new things, explore. And so for me, it's like I am just a loving person, but the work that I do is different. Um, you know, I'm in all kinds of jobs and I do all kinds of stuff. I'm an actor, writer, entrepreneur, you know, um, and I work in politics as the commissioner, you know, as well as some of the work I've done, you know, with you guys basically doing consulting for nonprofits, you know, and just sharing my lived experience. I spent seven years of my life in, in a jail cell, probably more years than that. Um, and countless more years just in self-sabotage. Um, I guess the one thing I could say that I know for for a fact that I am is I'm a gay man, <laughs> but uh, I say that because it plays a big role in kind of like my life. And it just took me a long time to get to a place where I could accept that piece of me um, and just owning it because society tells me that I am somebody who shouldn't be here, basically. So just kind of owning the piece of me that I couldn't accept. But I'm a whole lot of things. And I think the biggest thing is just somebody who continues to want to inspire others and live my best life, honestly. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, that kind of like leads into what I was hoping to talk about next, which is the kind of work that you do. Um, what I do know is that you are, I've heard you say that you're a youth commissioner. I'm not super sure what that kind of job is but I think it sounds super interesting I know that you do like these little motivational videos on Instagram which are very cool I've seen a couple of them I'm not an expert but I like them and um I was wondering if you could tell me about like what you do and also like what gives you obviously you are super busy as we were talking about before we started this like you're always have your hands in something so like what gives yeah. you the motivation to like go 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 like that Definitely. Well, I guess I could just break it down for you on like the working side. That's what I call it. You know, I basically just took my story and my lived experience and I turned it into making money. So I currently sit on the youth commission um, with the third district, which basically means that I am like an advisor to the board of supervisors. So I basically, you know, just kind of supervise and, and make suggestions around juvenile justice, foster youth policy, anything related to, you know, juveniles. And um, so we're actually going to start doing site visits too. So, I mean, the scope of power is different, you know, for everybody, but basically we have the power to do audits on, on juvenile facilities, on camps, placements, foster cares. Um, and we have the ability to go to any jail anytime we want and just, hello, how are you doing? Uh, and then on top of that, you know, I also am a part of different fellowships like the Social Justice Learning Institute Fellowship, which basically means that I'm creating, well, we're currently creating a survey to collect data around certain things like incarceration and, you know, how, you know, like racism, stuff like that. For me, my target is the LGBTQ community. So just kind of uh, getting data around, um, around state sanctioned violence um, regarding the LGBTQ community. I work with Opportunities for Youth Collaborative as a young leader, you know, just doing policy work around foster youth, the Reproductive Health and Equity Project, uh, sexual education and policy work. I work at the 
a community college, LATTC, as a student ambassador. Um, I'm also a part of the Beats and Rhymes Fellowship. This is the creative side now with street poets. So I'm basically getting paid to create my album right now. I also work at Joe Guitar Doors, which is a nonprofit organization that creates creative arts to, you know, formerly incarcerated and, and at-risk youth. Um, I, I dance, so I go to Vogue class on Wednesdays. I'm learning Vogue. Um, I walk in ballroom, uh, a, a category called Thug Realness is just basically me acting um, whatever, you know, the category calls for. Um, I'm about to start learning, you know, Aztec, you know, dance ceremony. So I'll be doing that. Um, I'm doing runway. And then I also do inspirational videos on my Instagram and TikTok. And I am going to start my uh, YouTube channel back up. I also have a blog um, and I'm writing a book. And I act and I perform spoken word on the side as well. Um, oh. Is that <laughs> all? I just, got, <laughs> I just got another opportunity to be an HIV ambassador for the Mod Institute. So I'll be getting basically uh, paid to educate the community around HIV and HIV awareness. Um, and then there's a few other things in the work as well, like uh, the one I just said, um, the My Sister's Keeper, I just got accepted to, which is like a program where I'll be doing video diaries about my journey and stuff like that. And they're going to basically, you know, teach me how to do it in a professional way. Um, what else do I do? Oh, and I go to school part time, too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm majoring wow. in English. English. <laughs> oh my gosh well congratulations that's um that's a long list of accomplishments good good for you and also how like how do you how do you time manage how do you not get burnt out you know you seem like you, you love know, it obviously you were like loving doing all this stuff I mean that's the thing that I tell people is a lot of the stuff that I do I love it already so it kind of gives me the energy and don't get me wrong I get burnt out on a continuous basis I have health issues right now and you know every day I'm in pain I, I never have energy really but you know the reason why I do it is because I no longer want to live in poverty and I think that would be the easiest way to answer that the more you know like dig deeper answer would be is you know I want to inspire my community my people and even myself sometimes to know that we're worth more than living in poverty. And I just kind of took on all these opportunities because for one, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not as much as it is. My schedule is pretty flexible and open, uh, which is another reason why I do everything. I pretty much create my own schedule. And um, I guess that's just the luxury of being in this place now. Um, and just being able to share my story and, and impact the world in different ways. When Corona first started, I made a commitment to give back to my community, specifically, you know, the LGBTQ side of things, but just in general, because I always took, you know, resources and funding, whatever it was. So I think that's why I made the commitment. Now I'm transitioning back to the creative side, which is really the impact that I think I could give to the world is being an inspirational speaker. And for me, I'm just kind of building my skills for that in a way. And each experience and opportunity is one that's going to help me with that. You know, I mean, who could say they did this? Nobody. <laughs> yeah, I, I fully agree. And that's what, totally what I was thinking when you were listing all these things that you're doing um, within law. And I was thinking, wow, it's like he came full circle, you know, and, um, and also to speak to your creative missions. I do think that that's something that I think about a lot. It's like this paradox, right? Where the people that are impacted by the system tend to have the least amount of power to do anything to change it, but we're the ones, you're the one that has that vision and that insight and the creative ideas, like how do we fix this and make it better? So it's so cool that you're finding on making opportunities to go do all that stuff. And yeah, you are effective. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, too much I don't know how to time. like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you also wrote. I know the one poem, at least, that you wrote for um, for 
our rep team. That was really good. Um, but yeah, I was reading that the other day and I really loved um, that last line of it really just um, stuck with me. It was like, knowledge should be, shouldn't be kept. It should be gifted. And it didn't stick with me. I don't remember it, but it really, it really hit me hard. You know, um, it was, it was very moving and well done. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm like the I, JV of spoken word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Um, one thing that I was really excited to, um, I hope this isn't too much of like a weird transition, but I was so excited to do this with you. Um, and I hope it doesn't just take up the whole time us talking about it. So if you want to move on, let me know. But a couple of meetings ago, you like just mentioned this super casually in passing and you were like, yeah, I'm going to bring me and all my other selves. And I was like, you can't just casually say that and like mic drop and walk away. So, um, if you don't mind, I would love for you to like, go a little bit more into depth about what you mean by that. And like, how have you changed over time? Like who are the different Daniels, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what I'm figuring out. You know, when I, I am going back to the question we had earlier is who am I? And yeah. I'm a collective of things, you know, I mean, one day I'm the diva and the next I'm the commissioner. It just depends on the circumstances, but I think for me, it's just embracing all sides of who you are because we all have different sides to us. We don't show up to work the same way we'd show up going out with friends or vice versa. Uh, so for me, I guess, you know, the one thing that connects all sides of me is, is love. And, you know, that's my biggest driving factor is that I'm loving and caring, which could, you know, kind of turn into people pleasing. But I don't know, Daniel is complicated but <laughs> you know it just depends you know like I said on the circumstances I'm an actor one day and a professional the next but I guess for me I'm just somebody who learned how to embrace all sides of myself and continues to push forward to be a better version of all the, the versions of myself that I could be if that makes any sense you know so yeah. I think the thing that I hold on to and the thing that makes me me is that I'll continue to move forward even if I feel like I'm dying. Yeah, I hope that answer you. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah it, it did partly, but I kind of want to dig a little deeper if you don't mind. And I was sort of wondering, like, if you could compare, something that we've talked about is like, um, that you've mentioned is you're like on this journey and like being really true to yourself and authentic and accepting yourself as a gay man, even though, you know, society it has a lot of work to do in that area, you know, so then I think how incredibly difficult it must be to be gay and be like in foster care, because I know there, there's a lot of gendering, you know, you're in a boy's home or you're in a girl's home or it's, it's very like, you know, so I didn't know if you could yeah. speak to a little bit like what that struggle was like as a kid. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I mean, I look back on my life all the time and, you know, I get flashbacks and I, I kind of remember where I come from on a never ending basis. And I think for me, I just came for a place from a place where I was broken and I was so broken that I started to mask how broken I was by creating somebody I was. not And the cycle just kind of never ended for me because I created this person that was the exact opposite of who I really was. And this person hurt people, this person hurt themselves, this person used drugs or whatever, you name it. And I just dug myself into a hole so deep that when I got to a place in my life where I guess I finally accepted myself in some form or version, I really did it because I came out because I was having sex with some dude to live with him. And I felt obligated to post a picture of us on my Instagram because he was letting me live with him. You know, my mom had left me and I slept in a abandoned home for over a year. And then finally, you know, I had to leave. And I mean, I don't think anybody could ever be ready. And I don't know if you'll ever fully understand who you are, because that's the thing about me is you'll always change. If you want something better in life, you're not going to stay the same. That just means you're closed minded and you're stuck in your past, right? But the old version of me was broken. 
And the new version of me took many years to get, and I'm still learning. You know, every day I practice spiritual things like waking up and praying to my ancestors, writing in a journal to, you know, inspire myself for the day, listening to inspirational speeches or drink water is difficult. But every day I do something to empower me. Those Instagram videos, they're part of that. Once a week, I make those videos because that's part of my journey. Another day, you know, I commit to learning how to Vogue and so on and so forth. But every day I do something that makes me feel good or empowers me to do better. And I think that's the person that you're trying to find. And it's hard for me to pinpoint and say, oh, I'm this and that. But for lack of better terms, I'm a bad bitch. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Well said. (laughs) No, I love that. And, um, and I appreciate you like talking about these things that are, I mean, shitty parts of your life, like having to like be such a struggle to accept yourself. And I think it it is badass that you are looking back and going, yeah, I did some stuff and I was, I was hurt, you know, and you like forgive that part of yourself and you're like accepting that part of yourself. Whereas a lot of people would, um, not, you know, a lot of people would push, push, push it away. And I think, it does make you a bad bitch to be able to be like, that's who I, that's part of it, you know? Right. Um, and I was wondering kind of like, what, what do you think like could have made things easier for you back then so that you didn't end up being so broken? I know how, <laughs> we only have 20 minutes, just, <laughs> but you um, know, uh, what are maybe a few, few key points? See, I'm, I'm super controversial when it comes to this stuff, but I'll answer your way and then I'm going to say it in my way. Your way would be more resources, more ability to expose myself to creative arts, more opportunities to not be judged by society for being me. See, I was conditioned since I was born to believe that me laying with another man was a sin or or so on and so forth. So society conditioned me for the longest time for me to believe that I wasn't worth anything. The other way would be everything made me who I am. And anything and everything that I went through, I don't regret anything. I don't regret going to jail. I don't regret doing the things that I did because without those experiences, I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't be able to share my life with the world. I wouldn't be able to give them a perspective that most people can't give. I don't think I would even have the drive that I have. So when I get to a place where I'm wealthy or whatever it is, there's always going to be that where did he come from? And I'm going to come from the ground and build myself up. And most people can't say that. And I think that's the way that I look at it. And that's why it's super controversial, you know, because people don't, they don't know how to own up to their actions or the world they create for themselves. And they want to blame it on other people. And yeah, society and the government has a lot to do with things, but it's all our conditioning that creates an atmosphere of hell basically so how can we recondition ourselves and it's when you get to a certain point in your life a certain age a certain whatever conniption where where you either realize or you don't that it's now your job and your duty to do something about your life and yeah maybe when I was young I didn't have that opportunity I didn't know any better and stuff but now I do and I think that's why I do the work that I do but also continue to pursue my dreams because it's nobody else's dream and for a job it's my own yeah yeah I'm so glad to hear you say it too because it it is like a weird place to be in right like we do this work for rep and we're trying to make things better for future generations which is important of course that's why we're doing it and why you're doing a lot of those things on that long long list um but then at the same time sometimes we look back and we're like wouldn't change any of it you know I mean, it's like a weird, it's a weird middle place that we're in, you know? Yeah, see, well, people don't have the kind of mind that I do, though. That's the problem. You know, some people could be broken mentally from one of the things that I've been through in my journey, whereas others could go through 10 times more than I have and still hold their ground and be better off than I am now, you know? So it's just about really, you know, monitoring that and realizing some people are people that need others guidance and some people are people that don't want you to tell them shit 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Huh? People are always, we're always trying to help other people, but a lot of times they know what's right for them. <laughs> yeah. Or they don't know and, and they choose not to want to know, you know? I mean, there's just yes. so many ways to look at life. We have so many different perspectives. I, for me, it's just, I'm a go-getter, so I have that kind of perspective, you know? You go get what you want. And some people need need others to help guide them. And at some point, I did. Don't get me wrong. I didn't know who the hell I was. I didn't even know how to wipe my own ass right. So, you know, obviously, I, I'm just saying that, like, not real, realistically, yeah. but getting the metaphor in it, like, I was pretty lost. And I didn't know which direction to go. And people little plant a little seeds, you know, like, oh, you're worth it or you're you're good enough or whatever it was. Or they invited me to a workshop or invited me to speak. And then slowly I started to see, oh, this is what it's like. Oh, OK. I don't want to live the way I do anymore. I could. Oh, no, this is so beautiful. OK, this is what I want. And then now I'm starting to teach myself and then seek guidance from people that know okay if i want wealth then i get a mentor that's wealthy if i want to be in the film industry i have plenty of mentors in the industry like you know so it's just about like you know your perspective because you attract what you are and if you're stuck in your own hell then you're going to keep creating it for yourself yeah yeah a lot of times um you know if somebody gives me a compliment i just feel like I almost don't feel like I deserve the compliment. I feel like, no. well, I, I, yeah, I've had some bad luck, but then I also feel like I got so lucky that people gave me the opportunity to know that I can make my own destiny too. So it's like, you know, and, and I can only for myself, I don't, I can't speak for you, of course, but like how many people would have pl- did plant those seeds for me that were like giving me the things that I needed to do better for myself. And that seed just didn't sprout right away. And I so want to go back to all of those people and be like look I you know what I mean it was worth yeah. it don't don't ever feel bad about planting a seed you know it, right. maybe it didn't sprout right away so yeah um well you're doing a lot of your own seed planting so um I wonder what it is that you are kind of hoping for for future generations and like what if any what kind of like progress do you see uh being made I've already talked about a lot of it but you know, I know we've worked on a few projects with Rep. I know you have a whole bunch of other projects that you can talk about. And, you know. Definitely. Um, I can't tell you what a future looks like. I thought you were going to say you couldn't tell me what projects you're working on. I was like, oh, super secret government stuff. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, I just feel like there's so many different ways it could be. For me, in my own opinion, I feel like we're still stuck in the 1800s. So I don't think nothing has really changed too much to be quite honest. If the fact that me getting married could be questioned or even a law that just passed in Texas where if you don't report your child as transgender, you could go to jail because they have a mental disability or A, B, and C, I could continue to name things, but I I don't need to go there. Um, I just feel like we're stuck in a cycle as, as a country or as a world really. And I feel like this cycle needs to be broken as a collective. And I think there's too many followers in this world to do it. I think we're going to inspire people continuously and there's going to be small changes, but as far as huge progress, there hasn't been much made to be quite honest. I mean, it's just, if you really do your research, there's laws that still exist today that were created in the slavery days to enslave people like loitering or public intoxication and the list could go on. So I think it's just about kind of creating your own platform and making a statement. So that way you can inspire more and more people like a domino effect, you know? Um, I'm working on a lot of projects. Uh, I think right now the biggest project on the political side would be to do these site visits and to start auditing these places and to start coming up with policy recommendations for the board of supervisors. Um, On the flip side, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm doing a lot on my own, but, you know, I guess, you know, just, you know, getting more into film and stuff like that. I'm, I'm actually working on my own project, which is my book. So I want to release the first part, hopefully by the end of the year, but the first part's going to be my journey before I came out. And then the second part of the book will be the journey after I came out. And so I'm 
I'm going to finish that up, hopefully, and release it soon. Um, and then I guess another project outside of the po political world is, is, is buying my own property by the end of this year. And I want to get a duplex. Um, but if you want to hear more about the political stuff, I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff I'm doing. I just did a presentation on the LGBTQ state sanctioned violence. So we're going to hone that in and start collecting the data from that. Um, just continuing to ultimately like expose myself. I think my life is a never ending project. So just, you know, continuing to work on myself, my craft and just everything that I do. I feel like by next year, I don't know. I'm just going to be in a big, a different place. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I, rich. I believe <laughs> it. You're going. You're going a million miles an hour. You're definitely not going to be in the same place. That's for damn sure. Um, yeah, yeah, and like just the the first when we first started, like just really sparked my interest when you're talking about doing those audits because I'm just, you know, we're just in such a place where we just hate our own government, you know. And I don't know if every place in the world is like that. I understand power corrupts, but just those little things is like, oh, there are some checks and balances. It is like a just that little bit of positivity that really. Um, really gives me some hope and I, I really appreciate getting to hear about that but just to kind of like maybe wrap it up is there any like maybe like key takeaways that you want people to take away from the book of your life or like major themes yeah. or maybe even just like some some baby steps like somebody that's learning to accept themselves for the first time you know that has nothing what's something small that they can do for themselves I know that was like six questions in one but feel free to answer. yeah it kind of was <laughs> no, I'm just kidding yeah I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I mean I don't know the biggest thing that stands out to me is turn your pain into money but that's what I always tell myself I love that I turned my pain and I created money from it and let me tell you I get paid a lot of money for a little bit of my time not all <laughs> everywhere you know but yeah just turn your pain into money and use that as a platform to kind of prepare yourself versus letting it hold you down it could be like a sticky gum or it could be like you know some bouncy like oop like you, you could get me up to the next level but it's just about your perspective and the way you look at life because everybody's gonna have a, an opinion and there's always gonna be a negative to your positive so how do you turn that negative into a positive and beat the odds? Have you you just change your like, perspective. Yeah, I you love that. The way you look at it. <laughs> That's it. Have you ever heard me like go on about this necklace that I always wear? Have I ever told you about this? No. It's like a, it? it's a, it's a coin, like a metaphorical coin, but it's like, like a coin actually. And it's like a, every coin has two sides, right? And the one side you can't read because we're on Zoom, but it says opportunities and the other side says obstacles, you know, it's just about oh. perspective. And so, yeah, I love, I, you know, it's crazy. It's like doing this. I was really nervous because I was like, me and Daniel are so different. I'm such a, like a pushover and you are like so strong and outspoken. And so I was like, oh man, I hope we can find some common ground, but I just feel like, wow, we have so much in common. So yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, is there anything else? Cover, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing this with us. Is there anything else that you want to add that um, before we we shut it down? Uh, I don't know. You you guys want me to read you a poem? I got a few here. I, <gasps> I would up. love that. Please. Okay. Well, I don't know. This is something. Okay, this is actually probably a perfect one to do but it's just basically about overthinking. So it says, damn lately I've been in my head. I sliced my fillings up like some bread just to dissect. It's hard for me to digest the fact that I lost you because man, I want you. I can't stop and smell the roses today because they remind me of the pain you gave me. See every Prius I pass, I look to see if I can at least see you just one last time, but you're never the one driving. So my heart drops every time. I don't see your curly hair yet, I look every time. I remember telling you I thought you were my soulmate. I still think it's true. I could see your hazel eyes burning through to my soul. Damn, this cycle gets old. I wish I was a little bit more confident, a little bit more bold. It's been over a year now and you've moved on, but I'm still second guessing myself. I can't seem to move on. 
all these damn pictures. I don't want to delete. It's like when I scroll through, the pain is on repeat. I could hear your laugh and see your smile shine, but damn, I wish it was still by my side. We slipped away pretty quick. We hit a big lick and dip, but damn, I really want to take another sip. My heart's ripped and I don't have the right thread or stitch. I wish I could just pass by your crib and get you to give in, but I'm sure you're with him and that's okay. As much as it hurts, I know you're worth and you deserve so much more than I could give you. Man, I took a moment to learn that I'm worth it too. See, I was hurting when you left. I forgot how to love myself. I practiced a face mask of self-care at best, but it was so much deeper than that. It's like you were my love reaper. You swept me off my feet the moment I met you. I swear I couldn't complain about shit, not even your breath. I didn't think I'd get someone like you at my best. Anyways, that was it. I'll, I'll <laughs> leave you all with that. I just, it was going to get you. a little bit more deeper and it was going to talk about sexual stuff. I thought I had a different poem, so. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this with me. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I'm sorry. I had to cut it off. <laughs> no, I, I love that. That makes it so good. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I love it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. To hear more and support our cause, like this video and subscribe to our channel. And check out fosterreprohealth.org for more resources.